But let me go on to uh, my colleagues who have been incredibly patient. Uh, Mr. Fleischman, uh, Chairman Fleischman, thank you for your patience. Uh, you're recognized, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Administrator Powers, I want to thank you for appearing before the subcommittee and all of your hard work. Uh, last year, as you may recall, I asked you how USAID planned on increasing sustainability for a $17 billion contract to distribute medicines around the world, which was a renewal of a $10 billion contract before that, which was a renewal of a series of awards going back to the 1960s. We discussed and you agreed that USAID planned on changing business as usual by working with more local partners in a more market-based and sustainable model rather than perpetuating the often disappointing legacy approaches. However, I've been disappointed to read um, that USAID has once again started to issue these contracts to the same set of legacy Washington, D.C. based aid contractors. My first question is, what is your strategy and can you assure this committee that USAID actually plans on doing things differently with respect to these awards and changing the development model to include more market-based, sustainable local partners? Thank you. Well, um, first of all, thank you for sticking <laughs> with this and with us. Um, we have s set uh, targets to channel uh, our assistance to local partners to try to get to 25% by 2025. We are going to fall short of that target. Uh, there are many barriers that I'd welcome the chance to follow up on offline. Uh, in terms of contracting officers, we have far fewer uh, contracting officers than, for example, DOD, uh, I, which I may have said in the exchange last year. Forgive me, I, I, I don't remember. I think we have gotten to the place where we're now at about Little, slightly higher than 10% of our assistance more broadly. Um, where we are lagging, as your question underscores, is in bulk procurement. I think we have a long way to go there. Um, you know, again, one of the reasons that having so having in, an insufficient number of contracting officers matters is, um, you know, doing these smaller grants or contracts, you know, eats up the bandwidth of these stretch contracting officers. So I think if we can build out that core will be in a position to be more versatile. Um, but it is the case, I mean, this is the only, this is be something that is important, which is that we are now working with more local partners than we ever have in our history. And the work with USAID.gov website, which was meant to bring in untraditional partners, including small business, uh, as well as local organizations in the countries in which we work, has about 4,000 uh, uh, people who have signed in and created partner profiles we are working through that. I think 70 to 80 percent of those who have signed up via work with USA.gov are new partners. So we have the pool, but we, on the big commodity procurement, which you're focused on, uh, we have some work to do. Thank you. Our government support for Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance, is critical to advancing our global maternal and health, uh, child health and pandemic preparedness and response goals. Over the past two decades, Gavi has achieved a remarkable record of success. At the same time, Gavi has played a role in promoting global health security. I'm pleased to see that USAID uh, continue to advance development of health innovations through the new 2023 through 2028 global health R&D strategy, given that we are still missing critical drugs, vaccines, and diagnostics to tackle health challenges like tuberculosis, HIV, and malaria. As you know, 2024 is a replenishment year for Gavi, and it will convene its broad network of donors this summer to commit to the next five-year program funding cycle. U.S. support for Gavi has always played a key role in marshaling commitments from Gavi's other donors, and this replenishment cycle will be no different. My question, please, is can you give us a sense of how the Biden administration is approaching the Gavi replenishment from other donors? Thank you. Thank you. Well, as, again, your commitment to, to Gavi reflects, I think, the bipartisanship that has uh, always accompanied these replenishment cycles. We hope that persists uh, into this cycle. Um, the budget request before you includes $300 million for, for Gavi. Um, that's a, a $10 million increase over that, which was appropriated in FY uh, 2023. Um, and, you know, we think that that 
signals the longstanding uh, commitment that we have had. Uh, a lot of what we do for Gavi is also development diplomacy. You know, like, I, again, trying to shift uh, uh, our way of doing things into both attention to our programs, attention to our contracting, and, and the diversity of our partner bases we discuss, but also recognizing that the calls we make to other countries, the way we leverage, for example, this 300 million, will have as much to do with how much Gavi has, you know, more, in fact, than the, as, our, as our own commitment. But Gavi is an investment in American security, health security as well. And, and I think that's what uh, our generosity toward Gavi reflects is both generosity, but also enlightened self-interest in terms of American health. Thank you for your answers, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Thank